our businesses or investments. It doesn't interest me at all. Uh, I'm busy with clients and doing interviews. So we have our time. But then at the end of the day, we're to, in the beginning of the day, we work out together and we do a couple of things in the morning together. Then we go and do our, our separate stuff, which are very separate. At the end of the day, we yeah, come back yeah. together. We talk about the things that we did. So it's not that the things that you said, um, your, your and husband's values were the same. Our values are the same. The things that interest yeah, yeah. us in our work, our productive part of our day, not the same. I don't yeah, care that's, how that's, well, that's, that's, how yeah. that might care but i don't really want to follow the bottom line of the candy store or whatever it is he's got going on but i do like to check in and tell me i just don't want to do it myself um tell me about his investing and i keep saying i am i'm sorry but um if i were the one doing the investing it would be just an s&p 500 (laughs) fund and that would be it i wouldn't do anything else he thinks that's uh, and anyway, let's talk about, um, and there's something else I wrote down. A lot of the things struck me. We're, we're going to be doing this several times because we've got a lot more to go through. But um, these strike me as very profound. And I'd like you to talk about them. What you think about expands. You can always do more than you think you can. If it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Wow, that's so significant. Staying strong in the middle is a life skill. Finishing strong is a life skill. No excuses, never give up, no regrets, and remember your why. I mean, if ever there were a set of rules to give to a young person to learn and to really follow, that's the set. So talk about that. Those were um, those what came out of my own life. Is you can imagine having six children is quite a bit of work, and I also had some other things that I was involved in. I took on some pretty some pretty um, big projects over the years of my life and had things going and I worked out hard. So those were things that I would say to myself, I would pick the one that I needed at that time. You know, there's always some, a lot of times we're like, Oh, I'm just can't do anymore. Well, you can always do more. You just have to, if it's worth it, you just have to reorganize and reprioritize. Right. Or right, what you right. think about expands. That's huge. Actually, I brought that from Wayne Dyer. What you think about it. If I think tired thoughts, and during my workout or during my work day, um, or if I think negative thoughts about my husband, those will expand. They will become all more and more and more negative thoughts, right? Yes, that's uh, so critical. Yes. So those were the things that got me through. I'd be right. I used a, a avid cyclist for a long time. I liked hills. Well, you go up that hill and it's just so hard. It's just so hard. And it'd be like, okay, staying strong in the middle. This is the middle part of the hill. Get through the middle part. Finishing strong is a life skill, Sherry. Finishing strong is a life skill. So then when I started my fitness business, we had these on the walls um, around the room. Finishing strong is a life skill. Skill, Staying strong in the middle is a life skill. So those are things that, and and I hope everybody's got a few of those that keep you going when it gets tough. It's amazing how it turns everything around when you start. And they're they're affirmations in a sense, aren't they? Uh, Yes, of course they are. Yes. I can always do more than I think I can. I always think about doing dips on a bench, you know, tricep dips. And they're hard, and we do them for 20 seconds on and 10 seconds off, as many as you can do. Well, about eight rounds. So about the eighth round, I'm like, ah, oh, the eighth round, I'm, I can't, I don't think I can do anymore. And then I think, ah, oh, I can always do more than I think I can. And it was so amazing. I could do a lot more than I thought I could once I told yeah. myself I could. Yeah. And I think that's a pretty good, not, so it isn't that you should take on everything just because you can. But you, if you something is important to you, you can do more. We have got a lot more potential to do a lot. If we're well organized and we have our priorities straight, we can yes. do all we yes. can we think we can. Yeah, it's good to challenge yourself. You know, oh. uh, I, 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 and I, I just, when I'm walking, sometimes I do that too. Okay, this is where I usually would turn around. I'm going to just go farther and then turn around. And um, now I'm walking a whole lot more than I used to in terms of just a distance. Because you be you're su- it's surprising what you can do, um, and that's true in work as well. Um, I, if uh, I I wasn't sure I could finish this this book and make it as good as it could be, but I've been focusing on it and look at what the result is. Yeah, yeah going deeper, challenging yourself more is so important. Well, it's like, like, you know, like the little affirmation when you read it, you know, what doesn't, what doesn't challenge you doesn't change you. If you want that's to be true. grow, we're talking that's, about personal growth is the key to happiness. Well, you don't grow in a comfort zone. If it doesn't challenge you, you're not going to grow. That's right. So that's you're right. Not be happy. You have to learn how to challenge yourself or you're not going to find that happiness that comes from growth. 
doesn't have to be huge. Just a little challenge. Like you said, a few more steps on my yeah. walk, yeah. a couple more push-ups, one more book than I uh, this year than I read last year, whatever. It can be small little increments, just little increments forward all the time. It, the key is the consistency. Absolutely. Do, big jumps forward don't last. It has to be what you do every day. Consistent habits practiced every day. That's what moves you forward. Just little, little improvements. It's really about loving yourself. You, you, you know, you, you can, if you care about yourself, you can make yourself a better and better place for you to be. Because, you know, where are you? Wherever you go, there you are. You're, you're with yourself all the time. And you can make yourself a wonderful companion to yourself. You can love being who you are. And this, I think, Sherry's book is the way to teach yourself to do that. Because so often we let other people's opinions tear us down. And, you know, or maybe something a high school teacher said still nags us. You can outgrow all of that. And that's what you did, really, by deciding, I don't care if I had a horrible upbringing and all of that. I'm going to make something of my life. And you did exactly that. And you made yourself um, into someone that that is a wonderful mother, a wonderful um, spouse, a uh, you know, a wonderful friend. I, I think it's just fabulous what you can do. But it's really about loving yourself, isn't it? Yes. Can I, I'd like to talk about that for a second. Um, you have to know. You have to feel that you are worth it in order to move forward. I put a, a little formula in the book that contentment plus progress equals happiness. You're not going to move forward unless you know that you deserve it, that you're valuable enough. I will yes. say loving yourself is like you, to have self-respect, like having respect for anybody else. You're going to like yourself a lot better when you do hard things. You want to become a person worth loving, yes. right? Worth liking. Yes. So while you're always worth it, no matter what, you do whether you decide to move forward or not you're always valuable everybody's always valuable you're not going to love yourself if you aren't doing hard things and challenging yourself it's hard to love yourself if you're not if you're not moving forward it's difficult if you're stagnant it's hard you can say it oh i love i should love myself well you should but you don't because you're not proud of yourself you go do things that you can be proud of make yourself proud make yourself proud of you See it all the time with people that they they I, I hear from people a lot because I encourage people to email me and people are people sometimes are full of self hatred and and they could so easily overcome it. Oh, I don't do this, I can't do that. It's it's a it's a tragic thing and I don't know how to help them. I really don't. I haven't there hasn't been any way I could help them because how do you help people who are so broken? So I guess my hope is if enough people read your book, they do, will figure out how to heal themselves because it's not that hard. You just turn the corner. Yeah, you start, take one step forward. You just move. Yeah. Well, you, if you would take, and I, I challenge people in the book to do this, do something hard. Just, if you're not sure that this works today, right now, today, it doesn't have to be like hugely hard. You don't need to climb my Everest today, but go do something that you don't rather not do. Do the hardest thing on your to-do list first. Do something you've been dreading. Do something you've never done before. Go climb a higher hill or whatever. Just do something hard, some hard thing, and see how you feel. And I promise you, you will feel better about you. And then you string enough of those things together, and your feelings of self-worth, self-respect, self-love will come around. Um, But start. That's the key. It doesn't have to be big. Just start somewhere. With I have clients come in. I teach them fairly early on how to start with the tracking sheet, even though we haven't gone through the goals that much yet. Because I know once I get them moving forward, they'll get excited. They'll want more. Yeah. We just get the ball rolling. Yeah. Yeah, I wish we could teach this on a grand scale because there are so many people who need it. Oh, my dear. We could we have barely scratched the beginning of this book, I have to tell you all. And I wanted to talk about marriage, too, which to me is a very important topic. And we're going to have to save that as well because we're coming toward the end of our time. Um, but I want to make sure that you have some time, Sherry, to just tell tell people what do you hope they take away from our conversation today? What do you hope people take away? If, they, if I have people take one thing away, it's that they're. They will be happy if they'll move forward, if they'll just just to motivate people to start moving forward in your life. Don't worry about being well-rounded when you first start. Just start somewhere and then 
pick up something else, something else, something else. Somebody asked me a long time ago, how do you get self-discipline? Well, you just start with one thing and then you add two things and three things. So just start, start moving forward because the world is full in despair. It's full of so many beautiful things to touch and feel and see and do. And life is full of so much happiness, but you've got to reach out there and grab hold of it. And the way you do that, I, I, I'm going to back up a little bit. I guess if I do have one bottom line, I'm going to say the solution to all of our problems, your personal problems, our world problems, is making ourselves a better person. You want to yeah. have a better, make yourself a better person. You want to be better in your business, make yourself a better person. You want to be a better parent, make yourself a better person. That's the way you're going to make that change. It won't be marching on the Capitol. It's going to be what you do as a person, how you make yourself better. You'll make the world better. You'll make yourself better. You'll be happier. When there was a, I think it was Gandhi or someone of his caliber who said, if you, if you want to change the world, change yourself. The greatest gift that you can give to the world is your own inner transformation. And that's, that's really true. It, it, it's, it's truer even than he knew, I'm sure. Um, but it's, it's so important to get started. And I, we have to talk and think about how to help people to do that. But um, uh, yeah, it, it, as far as people were listening and thinking, oh, I could never do all of that. Just remember this bit of wisdom, which I, I think I was a teenager when I heard it and I've never forgotten it. it. Pick up a cough the day it's born, then pick it up the next day, then pick it up the next day. And if you do that every day, so this bit of wisdom says, you'll be able to pick up a bull. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it surely would. Yeah. It's true. I never really tried it, but but it's stuck in my mind. Theoretically, it should be true, right? I mean, you picked it up every single day. You haven't skipped one, um, oh, but that's kind of you, it, it is. is it right? is definitely true. You think about my my mother. I used to say to my my grand my children when they were little, and she'd put them on the floor and have them you know spread their legs on the floor and then drop their head to the floor between their legs. And she said, now if you do that every day, when you're my age, you'll still be able to do that. Um, it's true. What we do every day is what matters. That's what's going to make changes is what we're doing every day. And it feels it's good to be making progress, right? I, I think that, um, this has been lovely, Sherry. It's been such a pleasure to meet you. I think what you're doing is terrific. Sherry's website is lifemasteryinfo.com. That'll be in the in the notes. And um, we're, we'll find a time when she can come back and talk more about her book. And we're going to talk about... I've been married 49 years. She's been married to 44, and we're we're both happy in our marriages. And yet, we didn't marry a saint. I certainly didn't marry a saint. Neither did he, of course. But um, I think we should talk about that because what was the statistic you gave me about how many people regret their divorce? Oh, it's like 70 some percent. If, when they ask people anonymously, of course, seven years after their divorce. If they would do it again, over 70 percent said they wouldn't do it again, because you know what? You go, you marry somebody else. And guess what? You've got the same problem because <laughs> you took you. Exactly. So it's working on yourself. You want a better spouse. I'll say it again. You want a better marriage, a better spouse. Go to work on yourself without any thought what that person's doing. You just work on you and you'll have a better marriage. Yeah. yeah. And as an added added uh, factor in that, they find that. Uh, children of divorce, even if divorce happens when those children are adult, are severely damaged often by the divorce. I was shocked to read that. But it means that, you know, marry carefully and then stay happy with that with that marriage. I think that's the secret to a lot of happiness. But anyway, we could you and I could talk all day. We really do have to go, my dear. But we will do this again. Please consider yourself hugged. <laughs> Thank you. You too. <laughs> Everyone, we have come to the end of our time. This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Oh, I'm so glad you were with us today. It felt, felt like a wonderful conversation. Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began. You never will end. And when you really get that, wow, it changes everything in your life for the better. Next week, we'll be talking with Ward E. Barkefer, Jr., who will be with us for the second time. Ward's wife, Suzette Shockley graduated in 2016, and almost at once, she was giving him all kinds of signs of her survival. She was communicating with him mentally. He, he was astounded. He was devastated by her death, astounded that he, she was still around him. And he has detailed much of what has happened in their lives in his book, 
In fact, he's written several books, but I could only find one. It was called Conversations from Heaven, Advice and Guidance 